dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout this world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening carefully to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph pray. over death and living with him in God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our minds. Exalt, let them exalt, the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out His own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. The once 
Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God, and we meditate on how God in times past has saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In his image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be, fer be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it for your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Let us pray, Almighty and ever living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer 
all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this Sing to the Lord, for God has triumphed gloriously. I will sing to the Lord, for God is gloriously triumphant. Oh, his own chariot God has cast into the sea. Let us pray, O God, who 
whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, or once you bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the entire world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with the destined for the netherworld. You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would, have, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know why, and that you may know also where are the length of days and life where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasures? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and tilted it with the four footed horses and beasts. He do who dismisses the light and it, and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. Where he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God, no other to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and re receive her. Walk by her light towards splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. O God, who constantly increases your church by the call to the nations, graciously grant to those who wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, 
it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. Lord, you have the words of everlasting gather our prayer. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism 
into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters, my brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. 
and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then the women went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the most unusual Easter's I've ever experienced in 40 years of being a priest. Monsignor Will, who's been a priest for about 130 years, would probably concur. This has been such an unusual Lenten experience. The Lenten journey that we started not that many weeks ago suddenly has been so disrupted, it's been hard to kind of figure out what our Lent has been all about. All the things that we said we're going to encounter or to do or to reflect on. For so many of us, it's just been so disrupted, we're not sure where it's all to end and how it's going to be. But tonight, the Gospel of John gives us a clue. He starts pulling the thread. He starts pulling the thread as he goes through the story of Jesus with his encounter with miracles. The first, a wonderful one, an exciting one. It's one that everybody would love to have at their wedding reception. And that is as much wine as you could encounter. The miracle, the wedding feast of Cana. And then the healings begin to take place. The people who are broken, their spirits are fraught with anxiety. And Jesus heals them and touches them and brings them to new life. And finally, what we heard a few weeks ago in the liturgy, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus says, roll back the stone. And the stone is rolled back and he cries out to Lazarus, his friend, Lazarus, come out. And then this encounter that the stone has been rolled back already by the power of the Almighty. But the stone is rolled back for the women to go and see, not for Jesus to come out, but for them to go in and then to begin to encounter the risen Christ in an unexpected way that they never really imagined, even though they had heard Jesus say to them, this is my path, this is my journey of the cross and ultimately to the resurrection. But until they could see and then encounter the risen Lord, it was still so hard for them to see. It's been hard to see, I think, our way through this Lenten experience, this Lenten journey. I was working very diligently for the first couple of weeks on Matt Kelly's Lives of the Saints, the stories of the saints, and I was writing my little reflections and listening to his words every morning, and I kind of had a good rhythm going, and then as the coronavirus started shutting everything down and be- began to change the world around me, I got disrupted. And so I went back the other day and started to look at how the Spirit had been tugging at me in a direction I thought I should be going, and then I realized he was tugging me in a different direction. And I'm still learning what that new direction is, as I think we all are. But what we stand on tonight, on this great Easter vigil, which we gave you kind of a shortened version of it. Normally we have a lot more readings that express the fullness of salvation history, but tonight we shorten it up a little bit. Normally we would have baptisms and confirmations of those who are coming into the church. We're shortening that with just a renewal of our baptismal vows that says we believe that this stone has been rolled back. And we believe that that tomb is empty and we believe even more that we will and have and will continue to encounter the risen Christ 
on the way in our life for all of us in our families in our communities life has been so disrupted we wonder if we could even follow the lives of the saints but when i read back a number of the chapters of the stories of the lives of the saints that matt kelly had put in that book i realized in so many ways their lives had been disrupted and disjointed and that's exactly where they began to encounter the risen Christ. So I pray that as a faith community, we don't give up hope in the one who had the power to roll the stone back and allow us to begin to see the power of the risen Christ. May we know that in our hearts and in our minds in this Easter moment. May we know that power and that gift of our faith as it leads us forward into uncertain and unclear waters ahead. The early church had to face that as well. What did Jesus really want us to do? What did it mean to go out and make disciples of the world, baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit? They came to discover what that meant in all sorts of new and wonderful ways. It's my prayer that the same spirit that prompted the early church to discover who the Lord was calling them to be as his people, we may know and discover that same spirit that began working so long ago and has continued in so many different ways in our lives. And the promise of the risen Lord is that he will continue to do so into the future. May that be our risen hope today, our faith that propels us forward together as a people of God. Then, we now pray our petitions, and before we do that, we have our renewal of baptismal promises, and if you're at home and maybe seated someplace, if you'd stand so that we can profess that prayer together, the renewal of our baptismal promises. And after each of the following questions, I would ask if you are able to do so, to please respond, I do. My friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Now that our Lenten observance is concluded, may we renew the promises of baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. To renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you. I do. To renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and of earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. Then may God, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, who is our Lord for eternal life. And so, my sisters and brothers, this is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We are proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we have our prayers and petition that have been prepared for us. But please pray at home your own special prayers. We have a moment of silence at the end. For the church of God spread throughout the world. May the light of the risen Christ scatter the darkness in the hearts of the faithful and bring them to the true light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all civic leaders during this time of the pandemic crisis, especially in our country, that they will be guided by God's wisdom as they lead their people toward the path of peace and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters throughout the world who have just been fully initiated into the Catholic Church, that being led by the light of the risen Christ, they may walk always as children of the light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our whole world and all its citizens who are suffering from this pandemic crisis in every single aspect of life, that they will find hope and strength as they eagerly await for a peaceful end to the crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our own Queen of Angels parish community, even in the midst of these difficult times, may we find strength and hope in the Lord Jesus, who by his resurrection has brought new life to us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, may they find healing in the Lord, especially for John Rivera, Sam Reuter, Menelaus Perlas, Ted Paula, Jennifer Papadopoulos, Marco Rosa, John Rollins, and James Kelly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have passed away from this life, may they come to the fullness of glory in the heavenly kingdom, especially for John Rasick, Nancy Feet, Marge Rose, Dick Normandin, Beth Wells, and Lisette Venezuela. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Heavenly Father, we lift these prayers that have spoken those deep in our hearts. We make them all to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is our typical time. Uh, if you are visiting at uh, this Easter season uh, to our parish website and happen to notice that Mass is going on, wonderful. You're most welcome. If you're regular parishioners, this is our time when we normally take up a little collection. You have been so generous to this, par this faith community in the past. We encourage you to continue to be faithful to those commitments. We appreciate your generosity and your spirit of trust.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord be I accept we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in these Paschal mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, that on this night, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world and by dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts proclaim together the unending hymn of your glory. created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. this mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, with look we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ.
May Christ make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <clears throat> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased, confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our bishop, together with Todd, Timothy, and Joseph, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. socially distant conscious, if we can pray together in the way that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, the night before you gave your life over to the wood of the cross, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And so, Lord, we ask that you look not so much upon our sins, but rather on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May then the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we take a moment and share with each other a sign of the Lord's peace. 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 Peace.
Behold then, my sisters and brothers, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal, Paschal sacrament one in mind and one in heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads uh, as you are, as a family, as an individual, as a couple, and ask the Lord's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of this Paschal Feast come with Jesus' help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Then may Almighty God bless us this day, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. May we be in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks. Thanks.